Well, and there's enough business to go around for everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in a, uh, we live from a mindset of abundance. Yeah. And, uh, and that there is enough business for everyone and we're not in competition with anyone. Yeah. And the, what, when the guy up the street's doing well and he's got to wait and, or we got to wait and the people don't want to wait for us, but they go to him and just this, it, it all yeah. goes around, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, well, I love that you said abundance, right? You live in the mindset of abundance, not scarcity. Mm -hmm. that, that's something that, that I talk about all on the podcast. And maybe for the listeners, it feels like I'm preaching to the choir, but for the new listeners who may not be familiar, right? It's, you know, can, can you speak to what it means in the life of entrepreneurship? And especially, I love how it was, I didn't feel like I had time in my daughter's life, right? So this financial freedom, this, I want to choose a life where I make my own schedule. I can call the shots while still being able to give back. Speak to that abundance that you have created for yourself and why it's so important for people to maybe aspire to the perspective and to the idea of living abundantly. I think just whatever, you know, a guy I've listened to before says it like this, that um, where uh, energy f goes, energy flows. Yeah. And whatever you put on energy on, it amplifies. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm putting my energy on scarcity... I'm going to get more scarcity, right? Mm -hmm. And so to put my energy on that there is enough and to just come from that place 100%, then there will be enough, yeah. you know? And uh, and I think, too, it kind of goes in a little bit deeper is that we do that for every level. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the customers that come in, but it's about our staff, yeah. you know, and uh, giving to them that uh, we want to see them improve and we want to build them up to go on to the next part of their life, whether they stay with us for a long term or not. But we really develop uh, our people to leave them better than when they uh, arrived. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny, I just told this story the other day, but um, I uh, gave a project to one of my general, man my general manager at the time, who's since moved on. However, uh, I just said, write down your goals. I wanna mm -hmm. know what your goals are yeah. that are you know, outside of this, place and outside and I, of I can never think of a boss that would ever think to ask me that yeah. like <laughs> and it and what's crazy is in the next six months those goals came to light for her amazing um, because I think she put it out there mm -hmm. even though they kind of came at her in a roundabout way mm -hmm. but it was to move away it was to move back to her hometown and and actually okay. uh you know, it was this tragic incident that got her back there. Mm. However, she couldn't be happier to be there now mm. and to just a new chapter of her life. Mm -hmm. um, and we couldn't be happier for her. And, yeah. and the way that she not only brought somebody in to replace her and train him and, mm. and to pass that torch, yeah. it's just, you know, it's, it's that win-win scenario, you know, that, that we're all in it together. So. Well, and, and it's that everything is, is circular, you know. Mm -hmm. it, what goes around comes around, what you put in to your employees will come back to you. What you put into your community will come back to you. What have been maybe some of those biggest lessons, right? Because I, I, I hear about, oh, well, it wasn't easy, or, or oh, man, well, we're still learning, right? And if, if you're not learning, then what, what are you doing in, in this business, right? I, I don't think we'll ever fully know it all, and that's the beauty of the journey, right? But what, what have been some of the biggest lessons, um, especially that we can share maybe for people that are aspiring restaurant owners um, or, or entrepreneurs all in themselves as artists, what what were some of these or what are some of the biggest lessons that you guys are actively learning or have learned in this journey? I think we're actively still learning who we are mm -hmm. um, uh, deep down mm -hmm. uh, and, and really for, you know, as a business, putting those values, putting those purpose, the reason why we're here on paper mm -hmm. to then make it a part of our culture. Right. Uh, and uh there's always lessons to, to figure out how to hit people where they're at, reach, yeah. reach people to not let things get to you mm -hmm. too much, uh, to realize that it's, it's, uh, it's just a situation that let it go, you know, all that kind of stuff. On, yeah. But what would you say? Well, especially with this year and everything that's been going on is that, you know, we, we were doing really well and really very successful restaurant. And yeah. then something like, 2020 happens and that it's to that it's okay to reinvent yourself yeah. that it's okay to not know mm. that it's okay to not know what you don't know <laughs> sometimes yes yes and that to just say okay 
I don't know. And then to be open to an answer coming to you Mm -hmm. and then being willing to take a risk and do something new. Mm -hmm. Because if we weren't willing to completely rebuild our business model this year, we would probably really be struggling right now. Um, And I think that, you know, like Josh said, if we let every little thing get to us, we would have really been struggling this year. Um, You know, to just know that a perfect life is guaranteed to nobody, you know, that nobody is guaranteed to not struggle, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and that the struggle is a part of the perfect journey. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what you do with that struggle. It's how you, you know, when when stuff's going on with the business or when business is bad, how do we treat our employees? Mm. You know, we, we don't treat them bad because we're having a bad day with the business or we don't walk around in a bad mood because Mm. the sales are bad that day or, you know, it's like people would walk in here in April and they would be like, wow, it feels so nice in here. And it'd be me and him and one cook standing in the back. Right. And they'd be like, wow, it's so like cheery and bright and nice in here. It's like, yeah, because, we don't live in that world yeah, that what, like what, it's what well, else doom and gloom, yeah. right? We're still here. We're still open, you know, and so we're good. Yeah. And so to just not live in a fantasy land, however, but to just really call it what it is right now mm-hmm. at the moment. And yeah. we were fine the whole entire time. Yeah. We were to, fine. To con- continue, you said this, to continue the normalcy, to, to make it feel as normal as it possibly could in a time of yeah. crisis, right? Act as, act as if it is so. Right even if it isn't, so that it can be so. Yeah, exactly. I, I, well, I mean, I, I love that, right? Because, I mean, I think about actually, I kind of coped. Um, uh, breakfast bar kind of is definitely a comfort food for me. You know what I'm saying? If it's not, if it's not a hangover, if it's just a bad day, <laughs> it's, I, 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 I can get something postmated or I can ride my bike here. I can get it and I, and, I, and I feel better, right? But speak about that reinvention, especially in a really dark time. And I, cause, cause I feel like the reinvention in the restaurant it's very indicative of how you guys reinvent no matter what adversity might come into your lives personally. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. I wouldn't even classify it as reinvent. I would say get back to the basics and get back to mm-hmm. who we are and why we're here. Mm-hmm. So that way um, that message can continue to shine through. And, you know, a lot of places in the restaurant industry are moving away from the full service model. Yeah. for financial reasons or whatever. And I think Pam and I have made a commitment that there's, there's a real uh, need for full service no matter what, whenever you go out. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, uh, if it's a quick lunch or whatever, sure, go to Chipotle, go to wherever. You could grab your poke bowl, you know. Um, but if you want to be taken care of, if you want to mm-hmm. have an experience, and I think that that's the difference is that nowadays – with everybody being online and being uh, disconnected from each other, mm-hmm. they're looking for an experience. Yeah. And people are uh, seeking those things out. And I think that's what we're really striving for is to create that experience yeah. uh, when you come in. So you feel like family, you get talked to, you get to know people, you become uh, embedded in the community yeah. because you wanna know who that person is and you, get, you keep asking for the same server. You know, you, you know about the dishes, you know, you can, can talk about things. And I think that's really the message that we're working on on a daily basis. 